What's going on guys, Burrito here, and today we're back with another Discord video, back in the test server, which is how to start a Discord server. Once again, we're going to be doing some ticks and tips and tricks. Today we're going to be going over staff structures, how, how to make a staff structure, what is the best structure to go off of, and how to actually get people on your structure. So let's jump right into it. Alrighty, so we are in our roles, um section of the settings for our discord server so i'm going to be showing you guys which roles to put in because these are going to be our staff roles that are going to eventually form our staff structure so obviously when you when you want a staff team i'm going to be going off my own like personal set of rules and the most common that i've seen in, seen in servers so let's go to my server real quick we're going to go to server settings and roles and you're going to see these are all of my staff structure staff structure roles right here so this whole category is um my staff my staff section so uh if you guys want to copy this pause the video screenshot whatever you guys want to do that's mine but we're going to go back over here and we're going to do a little bit of a mimic what i do recommend is make sure to watch this whole video through because if you go and copy the structure that I have in my main Discord, that's perfectly fine. But usually that's that's for some bigger servers. You want to start off small and then grow higher. So off the bat, we're gonna we're gonna branch off into this part in a little bit, but you're gonna want an application. So that is how you that's how you get members on your staff team. I've I've seen servers where people will ask to be staff and instantly get it. So we're gonna make sure you get the right staff what permissions staff have and what order they're going to go in. So off the bat, whether you're starting off with a Google form, a small interview, or just a text channel, or even simple DMs, you need someone to have an applicant role. The applicant role will automatically, it's the exact same as the member role, just different name and um, pretty much that's it. It just has a different name and it lets you know who is applying for staff. Who is going to be, who, who should you talk to if they want to be staff on your server? Then, once the applicant is eventually accepted to staff, you want them to be a trial moderator. So, obviously we're going to color and add some cool emojis way at the end of this video, but for now we're just going to go uh, one by one. So for trial moderator, I'm going to be going off my, uh, my main server's uh, permissions, so let's go over there. So for a trial moderator, you're going to want the rule to display separately from online members. Obviously, to just represent who is staff and what rank they are. So if there is an altercation, they know that uh, this guy is a trial moderator, so maybe he isn't the most skilled to have it. Or the reason you have trial moderator is because let's say someone is um, applying for staff, but they have malicious um, intent to destroy your server or do very bad things to your server obviously you don't want to give them a high staff role in, in the beginning because that's how servers get deleted and i've heard in quotes nuked so you want to start them off as trial moderator personally i have almost no permissions on them the only um difference is they can uh manage messages and that's pretty much it they can manage messages so i'll scroll through this kind of slowly and the reason the only reason i have managed messages on is because i feel like for a staff member to start off on the staff team they need to at least get into some 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 scenarios so the reason that they can manage messages is so they can delete other people's messages as a trial moderator i believe they should moderate chats and chats only and then obviously when you're a staff member you have the higher say in voice chats so when they're in voice chats if they see an altercation they can call over a higher staff member or um or handle it themselves also a little unique thing that i do is i give them if there are any perks in your server that allow people in exclusive voice chats no matter what when a staff member is accepted i recommend you give them all of those perks just as a reward and so they can access those chats just in case there's an altercation. So bottom line, trial moderators should only be able to moderate chats in the beginning. Then you should give them moderator, right? So let's go and create the moderator role and then we're gonna come back and check out the permissions for that one. So 
for moderator, once again, we'll be co coloring and adding emojis for all of those um, in the future in a little bit in, in this video, not in, not in a different one. So go back to roles and then moderator. So for moderator, it gets a little bit different. And as you guys can see, for almost all, if not all, my staff rules, no one is allowed to mention all. What they are allowed to mention is the regular staff role. So when a staff member is um, accepted on the staff team, they automatically get the staff role, which I didn't really cover, but I recommend you guys all have a staff role, which puts them under one category. I do not recommend you put it on top because when you put it on top, they're all under the staff category and no one knows what, um, what rank they are unless they click on their roles. So that's why I put it on the bottom. So they're still considered staff and when someone needs staff, all they have to do is ping that one role instead of one of these separate roles. So, up to administrator. Once you get to administrator, or sorry, moderator, once you get to moderator, you get a little bit more perks, but it's still kind of um, secluded and very limited. So you start to get to manage rules, and the reason you begin to manage rules is if you have a warning or strike system in your server, just like me, moderators can stand, start handing out warnings and strikes and just like in my me6 videos i recommend you have an audit logs channel or just a regular warns channel so when a staff member is warning someone they can write down the reason so if any other staff are talking in a ticket or the member who was warned asks why was i warned all of the staff can be um informed on why that member was warned so they can manage rules they can kick members, but they cannot ban, all right? You want to make sure moderators cannot ban. I recommend if you're going to allow anyone to ban someone, it should be above the moderator rank. Then it starts to get to the very, very, very simple. They can manage emojis, um, and they can obviously manage messages, and um, they become a priority speaker. Once again, they also do begin to uh, get some more authority. They get to mute members, which means server mute members. And um, pretty much what that means is if someone is um, if someone is talking and they're an annoyance to the server, the moderator can mute them and no one will hear them. The reason they don't have deafen is because once again, like I was talking earlier, if someone makes their way up to moderator just to um, ruin the server you don't want them muting and deafening everyone you want them at least to just do a little bit if they're if they do have that intent so we're going to go up to administrator so let's go back to the server and we're going to create the role administrator and personally this is where i think we should stop for this server at least i can't type my bad so for this server at least, I'm talking um, a very small server, administrator should be the highest role. You should have no head of staff, no senior, no super, no whatever, administrator is that, that's it for smaller servers. Because administrators, they should be the most trusted and they should be the most in charge of all staff. But once you get to bigger servers like mine, I'm not saying mine is insanely big, mine is Mine has 200 plus members, which I consider to be a little bit, it's it's a big server that has a decent amount of members and does need staff to moderate and administrate. That's why I do have a head of staff and senior admin and then obviously a council for higher staff to um, converse. So we're going to go into the administrator role and then we're going to start talking about head of staff and senior admin uh, in a little bit. So for administrator, obviously, this is where your perks start to get very, very, very heightened and you have a lot of authority in the server. I recommend giving someone administrator after a month or a month of month and a half of work and loyalty to the server because this is a big rule to give because you start to give them a lot and a lot and a lot of permissions. A very good question that a lot of people ask me is who should I give administrator to? Not the role, but the permission. I recommend no one except for extremely, extremely high members. So you guys can see senior admin doesn't have it. Head of staff, network director, which is just a very, very, um, it's kind of like what I call a categorizing role. It just lets people know what are they and it doesn't have any permissions because the network director will be a staff member. 
server management, assistant and owner all have um, administrator on. So pretty much what I'm saying is the top of the top roles should have the administrator permission because like it says below, members with this permission have every permission and bypass specific permissions. Pretty much they are above everything and it does not matter what permissions are set, they can do whatever they want. So back to administrator, they can view the audit log or if you have me six like I do, you can see regular staff cannot view the audit log this is completely to your discretion. If you want them to view it, your choice. But personally, I have my own audit log text channel, which you guys can see in some of my Me6 videos. But back to administrator, you I allow them to manage roles, channels, kick, and ban members. They can manage nicknames, they can manage emojis, and webhooks. I do not have that enabled because that is simply not needed. If someone needs to manage a webhook, it should be a really hop or a really high member or give them the permission for a short time being. And once again, you guys may have noticed send TTS messages is disabled. Um, personally, I think TTS messages are just completely um, just useless and they're kind of like pings. If they're going to be used, they should be in emergencies and they're just useless. Manage messages. Mention at everyone is a new one. Now they can man mention at everyone and do specific announcements. And then obviously server mute and server deafen and priority speaker. So administrator does get to have a lot more rules. The staff council, once again, like I said before, is a categorizing role. It lets people know who has this role is staff council. Just like if someone has this role, they are a network director, but they're also a different role. So for instance, an example, a senior admin is staff council, but he's a senior admin. Whereas you look at head of staff, he's staff council, but he's head of staff. So for senior admin, he has almost everything. They have audit log, insights, manage roles, channels, pretty much everything, as you guys can see, except for manage server and administrator. The reason I don't like putting manage server is because they can delete the server, change the name, or move regions. I'm not actually sure about the delete server one. I'm 50-50, I'm but I can guarantee they can change the server's name or move regions, which you do not want. You don't want to do that unless it's an emergency or it's a very, 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 very good decision. Because once you build your brand, you don't want to change the name or um, anything about it. So we're up to head of staff. Head of staff, once again, it, it has pretty much the same permissions as administrator, kind of some mix in the middle. So I'm going to just scroll through this very slowly. The reason head of staff doesn't have too many permissions is because he's going to be given a higher staff role or just stick with that, which I'll show you in a second. And his job is primarily just to moderate them. So let's go to the general chat real quick. Head of staff, as you can see, has senior admin, staff council, and staff. So that's, that's the case with most people. They'll, they'll have a high role, a really high role, and that role doesn't have any permissions. They'll just get the highest staff role. Just like the assistant, he has the assistant role, which does have permissions, but just to be safe, has senior admin. And just like me, I have owner and staff council. So that is how you form a staff structure. And if you guys would like to see um, the last part of the video, which is going to be how to form an application. I'll give you three ways on how to form it and then we'll be seeing you. So in my server, I have an application link. A very, very, very common thing is just to link your Google form, but my server is almost like a business or a brand and we have our own website. So we have our website backslash applications. And what I also configured was reaction rules. So when someone does apply, they can get the applicant role and I can see who is applying for staff. So let's click on this real quick. Alrighty, so we clicked on it and it sent us automatically to our website, ultimategaminglounge.com. And you guys can see a bunch of applications here but obviously they're gonna be applying for the staff one if they're under the staff category. They can go for any other application, uh, it is their choice, but this is what my staff application looks like. You can see that it does just give you the general questions like do you have a microphone, what time zone are you in, do you have experience, and some specific scenarios, and then obviously agreeing to our terms of service. So that is how you make an application on Google Forms, and then Obviously, I recommend if you guys are going to make an application in any other way, copy the rules that you'll see in Burrito's chat. 
All right, as you guys can see right here in Burrito's chat, I wrote down the five ruling that you should have in your um, application, and then obviously can throw in some filler questions, but these are the most, uh, the most important, I would say. Do you have a microphone, yes or no? Let's say they don't have a microphone. I would restrict them, as you guys could see earlier in the video, to a moderator and below so they can stick to moderating chats and possibly hear anything in voice chats, but pretty much stick them to text chats only. What time zone are they in so you can have a diverse um, amount of staff so people can be on at all hours? What experience do they have? Were they staffed before in other servers? Have they been banned? Or how long have they been on Discord? What would they do in specific scenarios? Um, how would they handle it? And then do they agree to your um, Discord server ruling? So that was how to create and form a staff structure on Discord. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you liked the video, make sure to smash the like button. And this is Ultimate Burrito from Ultimate Gaming Lounge. And I hope you guys have an ultimate day. I'll catch you around.